Somewhere, back in the unknown reaches of time, motion was created. And life. And plants. And animals. And people. <clears throat> and people. They learned to move toward things to survive. And quickly learned to move from things to survive. make other things move. This required energy. Some people relied on their own energy. Others found they could use the energy of animals. In time, some found there was energy in chemicals that could be released. And some learned to use this energy to make steam to replace animal and human energy. Some people found they could produce more than they needed. What to do with the excess? You suppose Jonathan might be willing to trade one of his hatchets for some of Mr. Adams' apples? trade and commerce expanded and the discovery of new uses for energy contributed to this growth it led to the can factory bag factory can opener factory and of course since the only fruits so to speak of their labors were apples they needed someone else to make their clothes and cars chairs and candles chimes and chisels and cheeseburgers and charcoal for cooking chlorine for cleansing conditioners for cooling Clothes had to be cleaned, kids cultivated, and cared for. Why, folks had almost everything they needed. All he really needed was... No. What everyone needed was... Well, it wouldn't take much. Just a little bit of wooded area. Just a little bit of the stream for just a little bit of waste. Take a little out of the environment, put a little into the environment. Need a little fuel for a little bit of power. A little fuel for the machines. Better make that a few more trucks, a little more of the woods, and more and more of the streams, and more and more into the air. Looking good, looking real good. Profits higher, resources lower, but everyone knew we wouldn't run out. There might be occasional shortages, but these would only be temporary, no cause for alarm. It was easy to blame it on someone holding back fuel, only temporary. And when heat ran out, easy to blame a cold winter, only temporary, or a little brownout. After all, this couldn't happen to us except during peak hours every now and then, and hot summers, and we don't get many of those. After all, we've been through this before. It's only temporary, until it becomes permanent. Even then, it's hard to believe. We found so many ways to use energy, and it all started so simply. Oh, no, 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 no. 
Light, I have a light, he'll take one, he'll take two, do I hear three? I have, he'll take, I have, I have, so he'll take one, I hear two, he'll take, she'll take their air conditioners, dishwashers, TV sets, furnaces, elevators, water coolers, cars, copy machines, airplanes, power mowers, power boats, power saws, power drills, power, power, power. Many possible sources of energy have been available. Water, wind, solar, tidal, geothermal, nuclear. But instead of developing and relying on all these sources, we've relied almost entirely on chemical energy from fossil fuels. We've relied on it for transportation and heating, for business and industry, and fun. We've used fossil fuels to make plastics, fertilizers, medicines, and clothing. Virtually everything in our lives. We didn't consider them non-renewable and exhaustible. The natural processes that produced our world supply of fossil fuels began 150 million years ago. In about 100 years, we have managed to use a significant part of the total supply. When it seemed enough to last forever, we called it resource utilization. Now that we are exhausting our supply, we call it putting too many eggs in one basket. Many of the plans to stretch out the use of remaining fossil fuels or to find alternative sources of energy will drain another natural resource that is already in critical balance, water. Our demand for energy is growing more rapidly than the money available to invest in energy production. For example, some experts estimate that we would have to build at least one nuclear plant every two weeks in the United States alone to keep up with the expected energy needs between now and the year 2000. The energy crisis is not an isolated problem. What do you mean? The world population is increasing at an alarming rate. It is expected to double in the next 35 years, and again in the next 30 years after that. At the same time, many of the resources needed to support the population are running out. Resources like petroleum, natural gas, copper, aluminum, lead, and zinc. There is going to be an increasing competition for a decreasing supply of those resources. Of particular importance will be food and water. Growing food requires energy and fertilizer, which requires energy to produce, and potassium, which will soon be in short supply. Food requires land, which is being consumed in building for the increasing population. Growing food also requires fresh water, for which the growing population and industries are equally thirsty. What do we have to change to solve all these complex problems? Us. Oh, what do you mean? Why are we the solution? Well, every human activity takes resources, results in a desired end, but also generates wastes. Most people are looking for the kind of solution that will increase the output while reducing the consumption of resources and production of waste. So isn't that the way we've always done it? Yes, but in a world with limited resources and dangerously polluted, we need to reevaluate the worth of many of our products and activities. Yeah, there's plenty more where those come from, at least until they run out. Environmental destruction? Never look back, I always say. Anyway, I'm only doing my job. Look, somebody has to do it. I'm just helping the factory worker. Yeah, and I have a husband and kids to feed. See, I pull these levers and push those buttons, and for a little change of pace, I push these buttons and pull those levers. Sure, it gets a little boring, but after all, it's what the people need. Right, Joe? Right, you are, Thelma. Even if they don't need them, it's the advertising department's job to make them think they do. I say you need two of these, get plenty of them, lots of those, and about four... Thanks. We consumers needed that. Soon we all will have what we need, and a few things we don't need, don't want, and don't know where to put. But the profits are good, and the dividends are high. Now we can continue at this rate. But the more goods we produce, the more resources we will need and the more waste we will have. Expansion? I'm for expansion. That's what made this country great. Sure, but what made us great in the past may not make us great in the future. Instead of needing more, maybe we need less. Or then again, do we really need it at all? Hey, how can our customers live without their beanies and still survive? How can our workers live without their jobs? Can we cut down or eliminate the beanies and still survive? Or is it the only way to survive? 
incredible energy consumption when we travel eight miles in the car we use enough energy to produce and distribute enough food for one person for one day in addition people don't realize visit our new car showroom and we'll give you the best deal in town on a bigger roomier car all the extras drive off with one today buy now pay later come in and but will the price be too steep Consider our use of electricity. The electricity used between 1965 and 1975 in the United States was about equal to that consumed in all the years prior to 1965. Look at that. We sure could use one of those. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having one of those snowmobiles or that cycle. It'd be great to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city, into the country with the rolling hills and all. While resources are dwindling, the population will be doubling. With more and more people and less and less resources, we can only reach the conclusion that there won't be enough to go around. Future generations may be in trouble. Oh, enough of this dreary talk about the future. There's a museum. Let's go in and take a look at the good old days. When deprived of their natural habitat or an environment appropriate for their needs, some species could not survive. While this was not always mankind's fault, we sometimes ignored or disregarded the needs of some of the beings we share this earth with. While it's too late for some species, others may be able to survive. to me, could it? Well, a lot does depend on what happens in the future. I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. Let's go see the futures exhibit. There is no need to worry about the future. Continue living as you are now. Your environment will be polluted. There will be food shortages, but humankind will adapt. Due to dwindling resources, there will be unemployment. Because of the vast population, people will find it necessary to put up fences and isolate themselves. People will find it much easier to disregard one another. It may even be necessary to discard certain types of people. Because of the shortage of resources, there will be increasing competition for available supplies. Some people may feel desperate and start doing things to friends and neighbors that they would not consider in other circumstances. But do not worry, human beings will adapt. Is that the only kind of future there is? Oh no, son. Here's a conservation exhibit. We're hooked on energy consumption, and it's a hard habit to break. We need to change our priorities like these people. All of you here at Energy Anonymous have taken the first step. You know you use too much energy and want to kick the energy habit. It's not easy. This involves everyone, individual efforts and group efforts. I'd like to report that Fred is now on his 14th straight day without his television and is suffering no serious side effects. And Dr. Jones gave up ironing three weeks ago and doesn't miss it one bit. Harold gave up taking the elevator to the third floor exercise room at the office. And Fran, who'd been on the station wagon for years, is now hiking, biking, and busing. We still have a few vacancies in our mowing without motors class. Many thanks to those of you who've been informing your friends and neighbors about our efforts. We can't do this alone. Those interested in going to the Capitol to voice our concerns or writing letters or making phone calls, check the board for times and places. We've come a long way, but there's much more to be done. Cutting down is not enough. We have to think in terms of recycling, not just throwing away. We need to consider the use of combustible wastes for fuel and uses for garbage and organic waste and to develop and rely on sources of energy that have been largely ignored. Right, Professor? Right, Professor? Absolutely. We already have many new solutions and answers in our search for new technologies. Unfortunately, we don't have all the bugs out of these new technologies. We have many problems and questions yet to deal with. For example, how much capital investment will their development need? Where will the money come from? If the bills get too high, where will the average person get the money to pay for the energy needed? 
And not only individuals, but businesses, towns, and cities may have the same problem. Another problem, as our energy use continues to grow and grow, our atmosphere becomes warmer and warmer. Some experts believe that enough energy released to the environment may cause some melting of the ice cap, which would raise the ocean level and submerge some of the coastal areas. Gosh, there sure are a lot of problems. Technical may not be as simple as many people think. <laughs> That's right. You see, even if we can answer questions and solve problems, alternative technologies may be part of the answer, but not the total answer. Part of the answer is conservation, as you saw in one of the other exhibits. Oh, I get it. The keyword is caring. We need to care enough about our own kids and future generations to make the effort to reduce our consumption of energy. And do we care enough about other people in the world? After all, the more we reduce our use of energy, the more there will be available to reduce hunger and poverty in our country and elsewhere in the world. Don't make it sound so gloomy. You make energy savings sound like some kind of sacrifice. After all, there will be new and challenging jobs in alternative energy resource development and material recycling. What you replace today's affluent way of life with might be fun and interesting. Some energy use is essential and beneficial, but not in the quantities we use today. And because of our excessive use, we've forgotten how to enjoy much in life, including each other. We should enjoy nature rather than exploit it. We can learn that nature is more than two weeks in the summer with in-flight movies and room. We can take pleasure in taking some of our food from the earth rather than boil in bags. We can resist a highway when a path will do. We can learn to unfasten our seat belts and use our legs, slip out of our headphones, unlock our doors, and learn to live with our neighbors. We can learn that an instrument doesn't need a plug to play. We can learn the joy of running through leaves and leafing through books. Wait! You still have one more hall of the future to visit. Oh, I see it. It's the one labeled Real Future. Yes, take a look in there. But there is nothing in here. No, not yet. Whatever goes in there depends on all of us. Our decisions, our changes in attitude, our concerns for each other. We must work to incorporate these attitudes into our public and private institutions so that political and economic incentives will promote a more sensible lifestyle in which people and their long-range needs are of first importance. It's up to us.